Hi and welcome back to another Amazon selling video. Today we are going sourcing at Lowe's and Home Depot, two stores I have never scanned before. If you're new to my channel, my name is Nikki Kirk and I've been selling on Amazon doing retail arbitrage for four years now and I have never scanned at Home Depot or Lowe's. Those are just not my thing. Every seller kind of has like a thing or a place they like to go um, or where they're finding a lot of stuff. Even categories sometimes like I really love topical and grocery categories, toys, and those are not always categories that everyone else will scan like some sellers might do home and kitchen and that kind of stuff anyways that was just a little bit of ramble all to say that I've never scanned these two stores before but I was recently asked if I would make videos showing myself scanning at places I've never been to before and so hopefully it's relatable because if you're a new seller and you are just starting out you've probably never scanned a lot of stores and so today I'm gonna see what it's like to scan at these stores now I have definitely been to these stores before because if you don't know I recently renovated the RV and so I have been to them quite often like weekly. I'm not actually expecting to find a whole lot so my bar is set real low on the expectation level so if I find anything I'll be excited. Lowe's is like more customer focused so like people like the DIYers and the home improvement people and then Home Depot is more construction like professional focused so in general like home depot.com is great if you're trying to like buy stuff that's where I bought most of my stuff because I don't carry it in store what I needed and so I actually expect to find a little more at Lowe's than I will at Home Depot but as I said I've never scanned them before so I could be totally wrong if you are a brand new seller these might be great places to go to because you can sell in the home improvement category and the home category now as always with every category there's going to be brands that you cannot sell so like in kitchen I can any new seller can sell a kitchen, but you might scan things like KitchenAid, which you cannot sell. I can't even sell. I'm restricted in it. So there's always going to be some brands you can't sell, but in general, you can sell the home improvement category. So it might be a really great place to source. All right. So first, I'm going to head to Lowe's and let's get to it. Okay, so I will say that that was actually a lot of fun. I enjoyed that more than I usually do. Like when I did that one where I did the premium brands and I went to Dick's and I went to Big Five, I didn't actually totally enjoy that because maybe I just don't care about that kind of stuff. But here, I mean, they have gardening stuff, they have barbecue stuff, I love all that stuff. So that was actually fun. So here's how it went. So I first went over to the gardening area and I did the inside and the outside. And if you are gated in pesticides or hazmat, there are trainings you can do on Amazon and get approved to sell those kind of items. They usually, you have to send them FBM or you have to send them ground because you can't ship them. So that's just something to note. So I scanned the sprayer and a weird thing happens. It said it was in pet products, which was weird. Like this is like the, opposite of a pet product right so I went ahead and checked it on Amazon and it's actually in lawn and patio which makes sense but then even more disturbing you can see here like what it says its target audience is and I really don't think it's for house cats and dogs but anyways it makes money and it's here at Lowe's so I'm not totally familiar with lawn and garden like I would have said it needs to be you know 40,000 or less so I, I did end up using Jungle Scout and keep a whole lot on this trip much like a new seller should because you don't know what you don't know so I was checking to make sure what everything would sell and actually Jungle Scout says it sells 90 a month so there's three sellers on it if I add myself for four that means I could sell 22 of these a month and if you didn't understand any of that or I talk too fast I do have a free download on my website where if you just sign up for my email list it's sent right over to you it actually has a whole lot of stuff it's like a whole jam-packed little ebook guide now I think it's got I don't even know how many pages six or seven pages of stuff so it's definitely worth it if you want it and it's free anyways I'll drop the link below if you want to grab it even though I could sell 22 a month that one makes under five dollars profit and you know I like to make at least five dollars so I didn't end up getting that and then I continue to scan all the sprayers and it just got weirder so clearly this is not a roundup sprayer image but if I was gonna actually buy it the ring is too high so I wasn't even interested but if I was I would double check that Amazon has the correct image on the actual product page for the customer this does happen sometimes so you always want to check 
as I mentioned, some of the brands I was gated in, even though overall I could sell a lot of the stuff, either didn't make profit and all that kind of stuff, but some brands were gated, like Craftman. So I just went ahead and just asked for approval anyways, which you always should do. You should always go through and ask for approval because you might get auto-approved. I did it in Craftman, but I did get auto-approved in miracle Grow. so always ask. I found some seeds that don't quite make $5, but if you do like the quick flips, so they were $2.49 and they make $1.99 and they're here at Lowe's, so little things like that. I mean, those are really easy, right? They're not going to cost a lot. You just have to put a label on them and that's kind of it. So those are here. I did find some Blackstone products. They were $5 off the normal retail price, so I grabbed some of those. Some of the brands I have been selling from Walmart, so I went ahead and scanned them here in the barbecue area because I knew at Walmart I can buy them, so I didn't even realize they sell them here, which totally makes sense. Honestly, I might start adding Lowe's to the mix because it was a lot of fun to scan. So here's a barbecue item that I found. It does make $5 profit, but it doesn't meet my 50% ROI requirement, which when I'm going to spend that much money, I want to at least make 50% back so I didn't grab that one. I did find a caulking item and honestly it seemed too good to be true for what it was. It's small, it's light, it cost four dollars and so I went ahead and checked Keepa just to see if it was true or is Amazon normally selling it. I just wanted to see what was up with it. So it turns out it wasn't in home improvement category. It's in industrial and scientific, which I'm not totally familiar with. So again, I went back to Jungle Scout and checked and I couldn't believe how many it actually sells a month. So then I went back to keep it. Amazon is in and out of it and the price really is that price. I went to the Amazon product page just to double check is it a double pack or anything like that nope it's a single pack so I went ahead and grabbed those they make eight dollars each so just that one item of, I found 12 of them and that is going to make a hundred dollars right there and because there was more of the same brand in the cocky Nile, I went ahead and I scanned all the same brand and I did find one other item by that brand which makes a good profit so I grabbed that also, these items have expiration dates, which you totally probably wouldn't think, or I didn't anyway, so just double check that you can sell them. A lot of the items in the caulking aisle were actually in the BIS category, which is garbage. That's like a miscellaneous junk, and you don't actually want to buy anything that's in that category. It won't actually sell, so double check that it is not that category, because like I said, there was a lot. Here is a wallpaper item. It was $2.08, and it makes $6 here at Lowe's. I actually got a little sidetracked in the wallpaper thinking oh this wallpaper is so pretty where can I put it in the RV that happened in the garden area too anyways so like I said it was a lot more fun than I thought it would be I am going to head over to Home Depot now where I will be looking for that same caulking item and yeah let's see how it goes at Home Depot I think I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna go to the outdoor area and then maybe the caulking aisle and see where else I gravitate towards so here I did cleaning products outdoor barbecue um, I did all the like plant food I even scanned some of the pesticide products I did the lighting I scanned some ring products none of it really made a profit but I did get some stuff here so now I'm gonna head over to Home Depot and look over there Home Depot and I forgot to mention that at Lowe's I downloaded the app while I was in store the Lowe's app so that I could check the prices because not everything had a price actually on it so that was helpful um, I scanned barcodes but it didn't pop up I had to like scan the front or like type it in to get the item to come up it also tells you where in the store it was because some of the things I had to price check were just laying around and I just happened to scan so it told me where to go find more of them Okay, so again, I went to the garden center. So here is a tomato food that I found. It has too high of a rank, but the brand did have other items that were profitable and had a lower rank. So that's a brand to look out for. I thought this was a great example because sometimes when an item has multiple listings, it's confusing, like which one do you pick? So you can just pick whatever one you want. It can be obviously the one with the better profit and obviously needs to be a good category and a good rank. So on this one, I went ahead and selected the one at the very end because it made money at that and that's a good rank. 
they do have a clearance area it was like an end cap so i went and scanned items on that but i didn't find anything i found this rubbermaid water jug and it's sold out on amazon so this is what it looks like when it's sold out but i went ahead and checked keepa and two days ago it was selling for 27 dollars. so i expect to make about five dollars on this one there was three of them Another item I found, here's some gardening spikes. They don't quite make $5, but they are here at Home Depot. And then there's another water sprinkler timer situation. Can you tell I don't have a yard? Anyways, this is here. It costs 55 and only makes 20, so I left it because that is not an ROI that is good enough for me. Really, it was a lot like I thought it was going to be. I found more at Lowe's than I did at Home Depot, but Lowe's was a lot more fun to scan because like I said, it's consumer focus. It's not like Home Depot, which is like really for the professional kind of focus. I mean, you can shop it, but it's not as fun packaging and stuff to look at. But I did scan quite a few items. Again, I spent two hours in this store. Honestly, I spent two hours in Lowe's, two hours here, and I think that's kind of my max because even here at Home Depot, I probably could have done more at Lowe's, but here at Home Depot, I was getting kind of bored. So. That's probably my max. So if you are frustrated starting out and you are new or a new store, just go ahead and scan as much as you can. But if you start getting exhausted, I mean, you're not probably not gonna make any good buying habits at that point anyway. So it's probably best just to call it a day. The cool thing about both of these stores is that they open at 6 a.m. So you can come early, which is awesome. I miss when Walmart used to be open like 24 hours so you could go whenever you wanted to. But anyways, so I'm going to go see how much profit I did total. But I just wanted to make a video showing sourcing where I've never sourced before because that was requested. So if you have any videos you want to see from me, definitely request them and I'll do my best to film them. I got some stuff, but honestly, overall... <laughs> I don't know if I'd come back to Home Depot, but Lowe's is definitely a store I should probably add to my sourcing roundup. So, there's that. Okay, so here's how I did at the Lowe's and the Home Depot. Like I mentioned, Lowe's was way more fun than Home Depot, but overall it was $650 of profit from the 77 units I found. Altogether it was 8 different items, and some I did find more of the caulking item at Home Depot actually found more of it and then one I didn't find anymore I only had the 12 that I found at the Lowe's so I mean overall for four hours of sourcing that's a pretty decent profit like I mentioned I don't love going sourcing new stores that I've never sourced before because it's really like starting all over again because I don't know anything about the store so it's like being a new seller that being said I did find quite a lot and Lowe's was a lot more fun than I thought it would be Home Depot was pretty much as fun as I thought it would be Total cost of the units was $641 for a profit of $650, so just over 100% ROI. And the cool thing is that if you are a new seller, you are ungated in most of these categories of home and home improvement. There are going to be some gated brands that you can't sell. I ran into them myself. I can't sell Weber and Craftsman, but there are some that you can. So it definitely is worth it. There's less sellers, I think, at those stores because like me, I mean, at four years, I'd only gone just now, pretty much on my four year anniversary, went sourcing. So definitely something to check out or if you're just running into dead ends where you are currently sourcing, maybe it might be a better option. So I hope this video was helpful and gave you some new ideas of what to scan and where to source. I enjoy making videos that you guys ask for. Again, this was a request from someone who wanted to see me source these types of stores that I don't normally source. So I hope it was helpful and let me know if you want to see more of this. If you have a store you want to watch me go source, I'm happy to do it if it's in the area I'm in anyways. So definitely thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you back here for another Amazon selling video.